Hello everyone, I am back for the next in my book club series. So, as all of you who've been following along know, I am reading Manifest, Seven Steps to Living Your Best Life by the amazing Roxy Nafosi. Now, this is a series, so for those of you joining me for the first time, sorry, my hair's looking a nightmare. <laughs> so for those of you joining for the first time, the full playlist is in the description box below the video. So I would really, really encourage you all to start from the beginning, because even though this is a type of book that you can dip in and out of any time you want to, you'll probably want to listen to each of them in order as well, just to give you the best experience and the best learning. Now, just a little introduction if you are listening to this for the first time. This is the 10th in my book club series. There's nine more you can listen to before this. And then I've broken them up into short little sections so that people can re-listen to the ones as and when they need to. And the reason I'm doing this is because manifestation has played a really important part of my life and continues to do so. So when my daughter recommended this book to me, I loved it because it's written in such a simple way. And I mean that with the utmost compliments because it's really, really hard sometimes to put things in a simple way. It's very easy to over explain things. And I think Roxy's done an amazing job in this book to do that. And it's also my favorite color, orange, as you can see. Um, so this is a lovely book. I would really encourage everyone to go out and get their own version. You can see I've got stickers everywhere for bits that are really resonating with me. Um, as I've said before, there's sections in this book where you can do the exercises, make your own notes. So it's like a journal as well as a book at the same time. And I think it's really lovely. I'm already really enjoying going back and seeing what I've put as I've gone through the earlier stages and almost giving myself a pat on the back as to how much I've moved forward. So whether you're an experienced manifester or new to this, I think this is a great book and a great place to start. So last time we got up to, um, we got halfway through step five, which is embracing gratitude without caveats. And we got up to page 111. So those of you that are following through with the book, we are starting at the bottom of the page 111 on the journaling system, set, uh, of the journaling section. And as I've said before, what I do is I read through the book and then put my own two pennies worth in there as I go along. So off we go. So this is section five, embracing gratitude without caveats. And we are on the journaling section. I absolutely love journaling and it's a self-development tool that I come back to again and again. Consistent gratitude journaling can be used to retrain your brain on a neurological level to focus on the good in your life, making this a powerful manifesting practice. Here are two ways to practice gratitude journaling. Technique one, gratitude lists. Every night or every morning, write down 15 things you are grateful for. I like to choose five things from each of the three categories above. So I start with five things that I'm grateful for about myself, e.g. I'm grateful for my resilience. Then five things that I'm grateful for that happened in the day. For example, I'm grateful for the time I spent with my baby boy. And finally, five things that I'm grateful for in the world. For example, I'm grateful for the sound of the ocean. Technique two, positivity journal. This is my favorite journaling practice and one that I developed for myself last year. At the end of each day, write down every single good thing that happened to you in that day, from the moment you woke up to the moment you got into bed. I really mean everything. If the sun was shining, if a stranger smiled at you, if a friend sent you a thoughtful message, or if you saw a meme on the social media that made you laugh, write it all down in chronological order. Well, oh, that might be difficult for me to remember. I might have to jot them down as I go down. So often the day can pass us by and we forget how many beautiful moments we've experienced. They can go totally unnoticed and unappreciated. We can even assume that the whole day was bad just because one bad moment within it. 
But when we sit down to recollect all the good that we experienced, we soon see that each and every day is filled with so much to be thankful for. After committing to completing your positively journal daily, your mind will begin to automatically look out for all the beautiful moments and opportunities that each day brings. After a couple of weeks, you might suddenly find yourself walking along the street saying to yourself, wow, what a stunning building. Having finally noticed the incredible architecture that you've been walking past mindlessly every day up until then. Or you might have a newfound appreciation for the cup of tea your partner brings you in bed every morning. Or for the kind smile the receptionist at your office gives you when you walk in each morning. You will simply begin to notice more of the good around you. And in turn, you will raise your vibrations throughout the day, every day. I tell you what, I am really grateful for drinking my tea out of my beautiful flask of cup that structures the water. And I'm really grateful for my dried nettles that I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next in one of my videos and my salt lamp and my CDS and my plants. There's so much to be grateful for each day. I created this practice for myself when I found myself in a career rut last year. I was suffering from a bout of imposter syndrome and I was feeling really stuck with some of my desired manifestations. I'd been given a notebook as a gift and on the front of it was written positivity. So I decided to turn it into my positivity journal to shift me out of the funk that I was in. I wrote in it every night for two weeks. At the end of the two weeks, I had a breakthrough and one of my visions came to life to write about manifesting for British Vogue. I was in the middle of doing an online workout when all my best ideas seemed to come to me. And I heard an inner voice saying, if you really want to contribute to Vogue, you need to take action. Step outside your comfort zone and send an email. The worst that will happen is they say no. So with my high vibrational state of gratitude driving me forward, I paused my Pilates class and wrote an email to the digital error, eh, sorry, to the digital editor, Kerry McDermott, and asked her if there was any chance I could write about manifesting for the online magazine. She replied a couple of hours later saying, as it happens, I commissioned an article to be written about manifesting last week and it's being submitted tomorrow. I'll put you in touch with the writer, Giselle Le Pont-Mort, and you can be involved too. I'd emailed her just in time. If I'd not taken action when the inspiration came to me, I would have missed the opportunity. It was a brilliant demonstration of manifesting in action. I'd had the vision of writing for Vogue. I due to gratitude to pull me out of my self-doubt. Then I released any fear or limiting beliefs that I wasn't worthy of being in vogue by aligning my behavior and taking action. I cannot tell you how immensely proud I felt when I saw the article. My younger self was screaming inside. Reel off the good. Whenever you find yourself in a low vibe funk like the one I described above, allow gratitude to raise you back up by using this simple technique which you can do anywhere. Simply take a moment to pause and then, without stopping to think about it, reel off everything you feel grateful for until you feel something within yourself shift. You can do this by writing things down on notes, app on your phone, saying them out loud to yourself or to a friend or writing them in your journal. I use this technique anytime I feel myself getting upset or annoyed. If I wake up feeling a bit off, it only takes a couple of minutes, which will makes it a simple yet effective gratitude practice. Just reel off all the good. For me, this really, really works. I mean, I do it more talking to myself or telling the cats often. Um, and it really, really works. It's amazing how much it can shift your state. And then once you've shifted your state, it's amazing how everything else starts to shift. We've talked about this a lot, but there's so many things you can do which cost you absolute nothing. But remember, no one else can do these for you. You've got to actually take the action and do them yourselves and then just watch everything starting to change. Switch. I have to do it for I get to do it. This is something we do a lot in our family. And because we're all aware of this, 
we can pick each other up if we see each other slipping, which really, really helps. I remember going to one of my first spin classes in London at a studio aptly called Cycle. <laughs> the session was reaching its climax. I was sweating, my breath was short, my legs were getting tired and heavy, and all I could think about was how much I wanted the experience to be over. Then, as if he was reading my mind, the trainer shouted to the class through his microphone, remember, you don't have to be here, you get to be here. It was a light bulb moment for me. I had chosen to be there. No one had forced me onto the bike. In fact, every single person who was in that class got to be there because they were fortunate enough to have a healthy body that allowed them to pedal with their legs. They were lucky enough to live somewhere that offered the class and they were put in a privileged enough position to be able to afford to put themselves a spot. In that moment of physical exhaustion, there was so much to be grateful for when I stopped to consider it. So now, why was I now wishing the experience away? That trainer totally shifted my perspective. He instantly brought me back to the present moment and I felt immense gratitude fill me up. This perspective shift became a powerful gratitude tool that I now encourage people to use every day. How many times have you said, I have to work out today? Or, I have to go to work, or I have to go see my parents, or I have to study, or I have to cook dinner for the kids again. Using this language implies you have no choice and you're being forced into something. It takes away the opportunity for us to feel grateful and it implies we don't have the power to choose. When you make the symbol language switch instead and say, I get to exercise today, or I get to go to work today, or I get to see my parents, or I get to study, or I get to cook dinner for the kids. You automatically shift yourself into a state of appreciation. This is because when we say, I get to, we remind ourselves that some do not. We remind ourselves consciously and subconsciously how fortunate we are that we're able to move our bodies, to see our loved ones, and to live the life that we do. I think that's so, so powerful. Um, it's, it's easy, it's easy for us to all feel sort of in victim mode or to feel worn out or to feel a bit overwhelmed at times. But when you shift this, I get to, and as I said, having other people around it who are aware of that, who can pick you up when you slip, it just makes such difference. It really does transform how you feel and instantly shifts you into that state of gratitude. And as we say, it's those little daily things in life that we often take for granted that when you then think about it or when they're taken away from you, you just wish you'd appreciated it more. So this is such a great tip to make sure that we're not wasting anything that is in our lives at the moment, that we're really taking that moment to appreciate, you know, if you have got children, how blessed you are to have children, if you are able to cook your own food, what a gift that is. Um, if you are able to go and see your parents, just magical because, you know, they won't be around forever or you won't be around forever. And I know it can sound a little bit overdramatic and it's not about not acknowledging when you're feeling down, it's about realizing that we have a choice about how we react to everything. So they, this is why I love this book. These simple tips, they are so powerful. They really, in my experience, are completely transformational. So I'm really hoping to hear some of your experiences with them below. So the next section is practice mindfulness. How many times a day do you say, I can't wait for, or I will be so happy when? It's something that most of us do automatically, me included. I regularly catch myself sitting at lunch thinking about what I'm going to have for dinner or spending hours thinking about how excited I am for a manifestation to come through. It's going to feel so incredible when. We say these things with good intentions. It feels good to be excited about something and it's fun to daydream about what we want to manifest. In fact, I regularly advise people to have something in mind to look forward to. And of course, knowing what you want and where you want to be in the future is the first step of manifesting. 
But the problems begin when we start to focus on the future at the expense of living in a mindful way. Looking into the future too often, regardless of whether it's a positive or negative future we're imagining, prevents us living in the present moment. And when we're not present, we cannot fully embrace gratitude. This is one of the reasons that I advise people to put their vision boards away after they've made them. To cultivate gratitude, we must practice training ourselves to be more mindful. Whatever you are doing, make a conscious effort to be 100% there. For example, when you're in the office, be 100% there. When you're with your family, be 100% with them. When you're in the gym, be 100% in it. Doing this will not only enrich all your experiences and reduce the stress that accompanies split focus, it will also help you to train your mind to live more mindfully. Every time you catch yourself losing focus and find that your mind is distracting you from where you currently are, pull yourself back to the moment. Focus your attention on how you currently feel and what you can see and hear and focus your attention on the people you are with. Another way to practice more mindful living is to incorporate meditation into your daily routine. Meditation is a practice of stillness and presence and just in the same way you train your abdominal muscles to be strong, you can train your mind to be more mindful. If you're new to meditation, I suggest beginning by following guided meditations, starting with just five minutes, then working your way up to a longer meditation practice when you feel ready. When entering the world of meditation, which is filled with incredible physical, mental and spiritual benefits, be careful not to judge your practice or to expect to find stillness straight away. The idea that when we meditate, we should be void of all thoughts is a meditation myth. The aim is not to empty your minds entirely, but to learn to observe your thoughts without attaching to them. Meditation is the practice of mindful awareness, using stillness and breath to quieten our minds. I highly recommend incorporating some form of meditation into your daily routine, making it one of your high vibe self-love practices. For me, daily meditation practice is non-negotiable. It helps me to slow down my mind, opens up space for creativity and ideas to come to me and allows me to increase my capacity for gratitude by strengthening my ability to live mindfully. It's an integral part of my own manifesting process and I always make time for it. Some days I simply breathe mindfully for five minutes and other days I delve into a 30 minute meditative manifesting visualization before bed. A selection of guided meditations, including a manifestation meditation is available on my website www.roxynafosi.com and the link to that is below. Now those of you who watch me regularly know that um, meditation is a daily practice for me and it really is and it just makes all the difference. It's something I've been doing for a long while now. I've gone through stages of life where I dip in and out of it and I'm at the stage now where I can really see the benefits when I'm consistent. So consistency in these practices is so so important making them non-negotiable part of your day if you've got children if you've got animals you can try doing it with them um it really makes all the difference and as one of my favorite sayings is at the moment you know make choices today that your future self or your tomorrow self will thank you for and that's something that bryce and i have spoken to a lot and bryce and i have done quite a few meditation videos and it's something that my whole family really practice. So what choices are you making today that are recreating your existing life right here, right now and your future? And things like meditation is absolutely one of those. The next section, notice the little things. As we begin to live more mindfully, we give ourselves more opportunity to notice all the little things in our lives that can evoke these powerful high vibe feelings of appreciation. Things that might have previously gone unnoticed can now become an anchor for that contented, joyful feeling. These little things are otherwise known as life's small pleasures. 
start to really pay attention to them, sit with them, feel with them and experience them fully. In doing so, you keep bringing yourself back to gratitude, constantly strengthen your manifesting power. Life's small pleasures. Examples of the smell, examples, the smell of freshly brewed coffee, getting into bed with newly laundered sheets, the sound of birds in the morning, the feeling of warm wind on your face, quenching your thirst with ice cold water, the sound of the ocean, morning sunlight, tidying up, lighting a candle, flowers, the smell of just cut grass, a smile from a passerby. Write down 10 of your favorite small pleasures. And you will see, this is why it's, I really encourage you to get your own copy of the book. You can see that there's spaces in the book to do these exercises as we talk about them. So it really, really helps. You know, you, you can listen to this, you can read it, but if you don't take any of the action, you're not gonna notice anything change in your life. On the road to manifesting your dreams, don't forget to enjoy the journey that takes you there. Pay attention to the small, simple joys of life and be present in each day. Remember, a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. So we've now finished the end of section five. Um, we will start on section six next time. Um, we've got up to page 118, so just a short one today. I'm breaking it down in short chunks because then people can re-listen as and when they want to. So you can go through the whole playlist at once if you've got a, a nice couple of hours free, or if you've just got a little bit of time whilst you're sitting waiting for the kids or something, you can just listen to one section. And also, because each of the videos is clearly labelled, hopefully you'll be able to go back and listen to the ones where you feel that need that extra reminder here and then. So I really hope you've enjoyed that today. Please do let me know in the comments below. I do read all the comments. I don't have time to respond to all of them, but I absolutely do read them. And as I've said before, it's so important because what I love about the people that are following through this series is you're so encouraging to others. And by sharing what's working for you, you're really helping giving other people not only just encouragement, but ideas of things that they might not have thought about. So thank you for anyone who takes the time to listen to this. Thank you for anyone who takes the time to comment, because I really do appreciate that. And if you do like this, please do feel free to share it with some of your friends or on your social media, because I think it's really important we get some positive messages out there. And so I would be very grateful for that if you feel so inclined to do that. One final reminder, I would really encourage everyone to go to my www.catherineedwards.life website and sign up for the newsletter. I don't spam people, but I am able to keep in contact with people and share things there that I can't talk about on all the social media platforms. So it's a great way to make sure that regardless of what happens, we can stay connected. Thank you for your time. Look forward to seeing you for the next series. Take care. Bye. <laughs>